Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Elizabeth and I'm a kindergarten teacher in California. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to deal with students who have potty mouths. And there's two different types of potty mouths. There's potty mouth talking about like toilet related issues, you know what I mean. And then there's potty mouth students who deal with um, actually swearing or using profanity or bad words. Yes, it's true. If you are new to teaching, that type of talk does happen. And so I just want to share with you a couple of tips that I personally use, and then I'm going to share with you a couple of tips that a couple other people have shared with me because I've asked some veteran teachers on this topic, like kind of what they do. And um, I've been given some really good sound advice. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so first of all, my curling iron broke this morning, and this is why my hair looks like this. Um, so please don't judge. Literally, I pressed the on button and it would, it, it just didn't turn on. So we're just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna pretend like my hair is done the way that I like it, not looking like this, but it is what it is. So I'd like to talk about students who use like potty language. Um, the first thing that I just wanna mention too is, you know, little ones, for some reason, that whole topic, you know, bodily functions is just so funny to them. And I know you know what I'm talking about. You don't even have to be a teacher to relate to this or to understand this. Um, you know, if you say the F word, you know, fart, uh, the students like totally lose it. How do you redirect that type of language or that type of behavior without actually talking about it more and blowing it up? Potty talk, you know, we call it potty talk, so any type of toilet talk or bodily function <laughs> type of talk, um, we're gonna lump that in with um, like profanity as well. Just because when we sit down in the beginning of the year, what we like to do as we are covering procedures and stuff was we like to talk about things that are appropriate to say in class and things that are not appropriate to say in class. And I reached out to a veteran teacher, Miss um, Dee Dee Wills, she gave me this um, little tip. She sits down and basically goes over what appropriate talk is, what words we are allowed to use, what words we are not allowed to use, and the importance of using our words in an encouraging way. So what we do at the school that I work at is we call it potty talk. So that means any talk that pertains to bodily functions or things that come out of your body that need to belong in the toilet. There's times when I've been at carpet time or teacher time and somebody burps or lets one fly or whatever and it just becomes this like overwhelming like giggle fest, you know. A couple of things that my team teacher has said in the past that I thought have been really great has been, for example, if you burp, <laughs> I'm talking about this, but it is, it's totally true. It's a topic that we all, you know, deal with and we all have to at some point we're going to face this in the classroom and so I think talking about it is important. If a student burps, what my team teacher says is, oh, if it slips out, that's okay, you just say excuse me, but we don't burp on purpose. So if it's something that they're trying to do constantly, then we encourage them not to do that. But she says if it slips out, you just say excuse me and move on and then she basically just leaves it at that. She doesn't typically say anything more about it. There will probably be some giggles, but if you change the subject or redirect pretty quickly, the mood has a tendency to change quicker than if you sit and talk and keep hashing it out. Um, if you just talk about it like, oh, it's okay, it was an accident, and then move on, t typically the kids do okay with that. The same is true for potty talk. So any type of like words like that are used to explain flatulence or farting or any of that kind of thing. We just encourage kids to use the restroom. That type of behavior is done in the restroom. And if you need to use the restroom, that's what the restroom's for. Sometimes I'll just walk by students and if I can tell that there's something going on um, in the air, I will just politely lean down to a student and say, do you need to use the restroom? Um, if it's clear that that person is, you know, letting it rip at their desk. So we just really encourage that type of behavior to be done in the restroom and we don't make it a big deal. You know, we just very politely say, if you need to use the restroom, you're excused to use the restroom. Um, but we don't really make it a big deal. I think the bigger deal that you make it, the bigger deal it's gonna be to them. And they're gonna giggle at their kids. Honestly, sometimes I giggle with them because sometimes it is just funny. But um, 
the downside of this type of talk is that sometimes it happens during a time when you're trying to give a lesson or trying to um, explain something or trying to keep their attention on a certain topic and then all of a sudden it's like their attention is everywhere else and you really need to kind of hone them in and so these are just some things that we do to just basically redirect and encourage them to use the restroom if they need to use the restroom as far as profanity is is concerned um, this topic is a little bit more um, this is a more serious topic I would say because this is something that we basically at our school have zero tolerance for. We do not let students swear or use words that are um, offensive or hurtful to other students. And so we really approach it that way. So in the beginning of the school year, we basically sit down and as we're going over procedures, we basically talk about how we can be an encouragement to one another and what words we can use. And then we talk about what words we should not use. If the word that is coming out of your mouth is not a blessing to your friend or an encouragement to your friend, we do not say it. If there is a word that's coming out of a student's mouth that is adult level, I always assume that they hear it from an adult. And so I automatic, I don't get mad at the student. Sometimes it is shocking hearing a swear word come out of a little one's mouth, but I don't ever get mad at them or feel like it's, they shouldn't be doing that. Or, because if they're hearing that on a right, we don't know what they're hearing. We don't know if they're hearing that at home, if they're hearing that on movies or what. And so typically what I do is just in a very gentle, calm way, I just get down on their level, I look them in the eyes, and I say, where did you hear that word? And a lot of times they'll, they'll say, you know, oh, I heard this word here or here, or I saw it here. That word is really hurtful, and that's one of the words that we don't use in this classroom, and it's actually not allowed in our school. We don't, we don't use that word at all here. And a lot of times, honestly, this has only happened to me a couple times in the past 10 years, um, and a lot of times the students are very sorry. They recognize it immediately. Teaching the students how to use words that are going to be uplifting and encouraging um, is honestly kind of a constant battle, especially I feel like in the primary grades. Um, a lot, I feel like a lot of what students struggle with, especially in the younger grades, is just learning how to communicate effectively. And a lot of times if they're frustrated because of something, then they have a tendency to use words that are not nice. We can encourage the students to use their words and help give them words to use. So for example, one of the things that I even taught my own son when he was very little was the word frustrated. I would say, buddy, are you frustrated? When he's having a total meltdown or, or crying, I just look at him and say, buddy, are you frustrated? And that tip was actually given to me by my mother-in-law. That really gave him the tools that he needed to communicate that he was frustrated about something. And so when I heard that word from him, I knew just to stop, slow down, and just get on his level and let's talk about it. That really helps little ones. If they can communicate how they feel, if they can communicate what they want, and you can come to a compromise on something, um, I feel like a lot of times that's like the biggest battle. That's like the that's the hardest part of the whole communication barrier. And so with little ones in the classroom, if they are not able to communicate well or they're not they can't quite find the words I, I feel like in my experience a lot of times what happens is they use words to try to communicate but sometimes it comes out and they get mad and they're not able to communicate and then they just kind of lash out with their words and they say you're stupid or you're blah, blah, blah. and then it ends up being um really the, the problem was they're tired or they're not able to find the right word to explain the situation or they don't know how to formulate the sentence yet you know in their mind or communicate what they're feeling and so a lot of times just helping them um, communicate that really is the thing that is going to solve the problem so with with profanity if it becomes a pattern, if it becomes something that I feel like we're not getting anywhere on, I always talk to my administrator about all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then typically I just get her advice. If it becomes a habit, it might be something that we talk to the parent about. I've never had to do that, but um, typically those types of things can get resolved in the classroom with consistency. So anyways, so that's how we handle potty mouth, potty talk, swearing, profanity, that kind of thing in the classroom. Comment below if you're a teacher or if you have any tips or phrases maybe that you use that would help other teachers because I'd love to read that as well, but I know other teachers watching this would love to hear your um, tips and tricks that you use in the classroom to help maybe redirect or like I said, phrases or comments that you say. Let us know how you encourage your students to not use the F word <laughs> 
in class. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking this video out. If you found this helpful, please give this video a thumbs up as that really promotes the video, helps this video reach other teachers, educators just like you. And feel free to comment below if you have any questions or comments. I always love, I always try to read every single comment in the videos. I've also linked all of my social media accounts down below. So if you'd like to click on those and follow and subscribe, I always love to connect with new teachers or new subscribers. So that's it for today. Woohoo! We got through. I will see you in the next video and thank you so much for watching. See ya. Bye.